Um, now, I think we have, to be, we have to be balanced here. I can't say that atheists have a fantastic record of being virtuous uh, either. We've certainly had all sorts of atrocities committed uh, by atheists, such as uh, Stalin and, and Pol Pot. Um, there's no doubt of that. Uh, and, but we have comparable atrocities committed by Christians uh, um, through the Crusades, the Inquisitions, the Thirty Years' War, um, and so on. And I'm certainly not going to concede to the uh, religious uh, moralists the claim that Hitler was an atheist. He's often lumped with uh, Stalin and uh, Pol Pot uh, among the terrible atheists of the 20th century. But Hitler certainly talked a lot about God. He may not have been an orthodox uh, Catholic as he was brought up, but he certainly talked a lot about God if you read his table talk. And uh, the German army had uh, belt buckles that were inscribed with the words, Gott mit uns, God with us. So I don't think we can place the Nazis in the uh, atheist side of the spectrum. And of course, it's not only uh, Christians either that we should be concerned about here. We've had innumerable conflicts over the centuries between Sunni and Shiite Muslims, in which all sorts of atrocities have also been committed. And uh, of course, we have as uh, one of the threats to peace today, religious fanatics uh, of Islamic persuasion who uh, blow themselves up, reassured with the idea that uh, this will win them a place in paradise. These seem to be perhaps the only religious people who are really confident um, in a place in paradise if they do what they believe to be the right thing, unfortunately. And if we look at the more positive side of good behavior, it's, it's sometimes said that uh, uh, Christians give more to charity than secular people. There's some support for that if you look at the statistics about how much is given to charity in the United States. But um, the, if you look at, at where, wh what charities people are giving to, the largest slice of the charitable pie in the United States is religious institutions themselves. So perhaps that accounts for some of the fact that religious people are giving more. They're giving to support the church and the salaries uh, of their religious institutions where they are. It's worth noting that despite the fact that, as I said, Jesus has all this emphasis on helping the poor, three of the four greatest philanthropists in history concerned with, with helping the poor and promoting the general good have been non-believers. I'm referring to Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and Andrew Carnegie. The uh, exception among the, the top four is John D. Rockefeller, who was a Protestant. Uh, but of the contemporary philanthropists, Gates and Buffett, stand out. They've given more, even adjusted for inflation, they've given more than any other human being in history. And they have given it to deal with the greatest problems of the world that affect the poor. Um, to, for example, develop cures for diseases like malaria, where there's not enough money going into research uh, because most of the market would be in the developing world where people are too poor to provide a profitable market for the drug companies. Um, so uh, it's clear that people can be motivated to do what's best uh, without religious belief. Um, one of my great, uh, greatest colleagues uh, in the animal movement um, was a man called Henry Spira, uh, who I think has also done an enormous amount to reduce the amount of pain and suffering in the universe, because he was uh, the most effective animal rights activist, I think, in the late 20th century. Um, Henry Spira never had much money. Um, his form of philanthropy was to, to devote time and energy and his very considerable intellect to finding effective ways to help the downtrodden and the oppressed. Um, not only animals, incidentally, he marched for civil rights in the South in the 60s. Uh, he worked for uh, the labor unions for union reform against corrupt union movements in the Merchant Marine, where he served for a while, um, and uh, also, of course, for non-human animals. Towards the end of his life, he had cancer. He knew he didn't have very long to live, and I interviewed him to make a video so that others could learn from his methods and his general philosophy. And I asked him, um, given that he was an atheist um, and that he regarded death as the end of his existence, what had driven him to spend his life working for others? And he replied, I guess basically one wants to feel that one's life has amounted to more than just consuming products and generating garbage. 
I think that one likes to look back and say that one's done the best one can to make this a better place for others. You look at it from this point of view. What greater motivation can there be than doing whatever one possibly can to reduce pain and suffering? 